now is a wonderful, wonderful dear friend, powerful woman of God, uh, just tremendously gifted. I want you guys to put your hands together now and to receive Prophetess Tara Carissa Hodges as she preaches the word. Oh, bless the Lord. Just keep putting your hands together for the Lord. Isn't he worthy to be praised? Isn't he worthy to be praised? Hasn't he been better to you than you've been to your own self? Truly God is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God is worthy to be praised. You ought to put your hands together because the truth be told, you should not be in the studio on this day today. You ought to be in your grave. You ought to be in the hospital. You ought to be in prison. But God looked past all of your mess and he says, I'm going to praise you in spite of who you are, in spite of what you've done, in spite of where you're being. You ought to put your hands together. I'm moving quickly. I don't have much time. I'm moving quickly, but you just ought to keep praising God. He is wise. You just ought to keep praising God. He's done too much for you. He's kept you in your right mind. He's made a way out of no way. He's kept food on your table. He's backed your enemies up. You still alive. You still in your right mind. That's praiseworthy. All the hell you've been through. Satan thought he had you, but you want to hop up your name and say, neighbor, hey, hey, I, I made it out of what the enemy thought he was going to keep me in. He didn't think I was coming out of this, baby. <laughs> but baby, uh, not only did I come out to hey, but I messed around and I came out better. I'm moving quickly, I'm moving quickly, I'm moving quickly. For those of you uh, who have your word, I'm coming out of 1 Samuel. I'm coming out of 1 Samuel, uh, the first chapter. And I'm going to begin reading uh, at verse number 4. 1 Samuel chapter 1, beginning at verse number 4. Hmm. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, uh, he would give portions of the meat uh, to his wife, Penina, and to all of her sons and daughters. Uh, but to Hannah, he gave a double portion uh, because he loved her uh, and the Lord had closed up her womb. Uh, and because the Lord had closed up her womb, uh, her rival kept provoking her uh, in order to irritate her. Uh, this went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, somebody said the house of the Lord. Her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. See, some of y'all didn't realize this, but you have rivals in the house of the Lord. I want you to skip down and go to verse number 20. It says, so in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. I want to give you background on the story. You understand that by the time we get to 1 Samuel 1, we are dealing with a main character named Hannah. This is a woman who is barren. This is a woman who hadn't birthed nothing. And this is not the era that we live in today, y'all. But in the Bible days, if you hadn't birthed nothing, you were considered cursed. Am I talking to anybody in the room who understands what it feels like to be looked at as if you were cursed? Because to people, it looked like you hadn't birthed nothing. But you need to tell people, honey, I don't care what it looks like. You just need to give me time because I declare that at the end of this thing. I'm going to birth something and it's going to be greater than when I would have birthed had I done it in my own time. Says whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, uh, he would give portions of meat to his wife Penina and to all of her sons and daughter. How many of you know what it feels like uh, to show up to the house of the Lord uh, and it looked like all your brothers and sisters are getting blessed, uh, but it looked like God don't even know your name. Uh, I stopped by to tell you in this season, uh, you need to get it in your heart uh, and you need to get it in your spirit. Uh, this is the season uh, that God will not leave this season without blessing me. So Hannah, she's showing up, uh, and she's seeing everybody be blessed uh, because the Bible says that her husband uh, would give Penina sons and daughters uh, all of that stuff. But to Hannah, uh, he gave a double portion uh, because he loved her, and the Lord had closed her womb. Uh -huh. 
See, this messed me up for a minute because you need to understand that even though you're not producing something does not mean that God does not love you. You need to understand that when you are walking with the Lord, there will be seasons that you are favored but not fruitful. For the Bible says that she was favored and her husband loved her greatly. But even in all of his love for her, she still wasn't producing anything. I stopped by to tell you that some of you, you were guilty of looking at your life. Life, uh, and thinking that God does not love you uh, because it looks like you hadn't produced nothing. Uh, it looks like the business is not getting off the ground. Uh, it looks like the ministry is not growing. Uh, it looks like you're not going to get married. Uh, it looks like you're not going to get well. Uh, it looks like you're not going to get delivered. Uh, but I stop by to tell you uh, that even when you're not fruitful, you better high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm still favored. Hey! And because the Lord had closed her womb. Don't miss that. See, you thought you didn't get it because it was something you've done. But you need to understand that every now and again in your life, there's some stuff you ain't got because God stopped it. There's some things in your life that hadn't worked out because God said it ain't time. There's some things you ain't gotten there yet because God said, baby, you just need to wait your time. That's why I've learned not to look at other people uh, because everybody is on a different timetable. Uh, you need to look over at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't judge me yet. Because if you do, uh, you might just be exposing that you can't tell time. Uh, see, you need to understand uh, that God has a time frame uh, to bless you. Uh, God has a time period uh, that he's going to do it. Uh, God has a set time. Uh, and for all of your spectators, uh, you need to tell them, uh, don't judge my harvest season off of yours, baby. So he loved her, but her womb was shut up. And watch this, and the Bible says, because the Lord had closed up her womb, her rival kept provoking her. If I'm talking to any people in the building, there are people in here, you understand what it feels like for church folks to be talking about you. You understand what it feels like for church folks to be judging you. You understand what church folks, what it feels like for church folks not to like you. Because the Bible said all of this was happening in the house of the Lord. Uh, what do you do, prophetess? Uh, when people are talking about you in the house of the Lord, uh, you come into the house with a made-up mind. Uh, I don't care who's talking about me. Uh, I'll still worship. Uh, I don't care who likes me. Uh, I'll still praise. Uh, I don't care who gossip about me. Uh, I'll still trust. Uh, I'll still keep my faith. Uh, I won't give up on God. Yeah the year. Don't miss that because the truth be told us some of us want to give up on God because he ain't answered us since last week. But there will be seasons of your life where it feels like you are going year after year and God ain't doing nothing. Can I tell you something? That's the time of your life where you need to make up in your mind. I'm determined to hold out and wait on God. Want to keep on reading? want to go down because some of you missed this in Hannah's story. When you get down to around the 13th verse, uh, it says Hannah was so distraught uh, that literally she would show up at the temple uh, so overwhelmed with grief, uh, so overwhelmed with tears uh, that the priest thought that she was drunk. Uh, can I tell you something? Uh, you ain't favored until the people of God misjudge you. They thought she was drunk and she was waiting on her blessing. Uh, they thought that she was, she was a mess and she was waiting on her miracle. Uh, you need to understand uh, that even sometimes church folks will talk about you uh, while you are waiting on God. Bible says that the priest said, how long will you keep on getting drunk? Uh, you need to high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, I, I know my praise don't look like yours, uh, but baby, I'm still praising God. Uh, I know I run. Uh, I know I fall out. Uh, I know I shout. Uh, I know that's a little bit different, uh, but baby, I promise you, uh, I am in the Lord. I like this. My time is almost up, but watch this. It says, in the course of time. Can I tell you something about a course? The word course represents that 
you're running a marathon. Uh, the word course comes from the fact that you got some loops that you're going to have to go through. Uh, the word course means uh, you're going to have to go through a trial. Uh, and can I tell you something? Uh, when you come up out of this, uh, you're going to birth everything that God has assigned to your life uh, for you to birth. Uh, all you had to do uh, was give it time. I'm done. My time is up, but if you have a made up mind uh, that you are going to wait on the Lord, uh, if you have a made up mind, I'm not giving up now. Uh, if you have a made up mind, uh, I'm going to keep pressing up. Uh, you ought to put your hands together right where you are and give God your best praise. Uh, this praise is for, I'm not giving up. Uh, this praise is I'm going to stay in the race. Uh, this praise is for, I'm not going in the towel. Uh, this praise is for, uh, I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna run on. I promise I'm not giving up on God. You're birthed in time. I said you're birthed in time. I said you'll birth that baby in time. You'll birth your miracle in time. You'll get your healing in time. You'll get your deliverance in time. All you really needed was time. You better tell your haters, you better tell your spectators, uh, baby, wait until I come through this thing called time. Uh, if you just believe that God is still going to do it, start praising where you are. <laughs>